Well, uh, first of all, what does it feel like to watch the elections and the campaigns of this nation on the sidelines after 20 years in the struggle, and this time you're, you're watching this? What's the experience like? Well, it's certainly, uh, you know, fairly different from uh, being in the hectic thick of it. Oh, yes. But uh, I can tell you that uh, it doesn't make the frustration oh, yes. of what one feels any less. Mm. If anything, maybe it's more. You know, looking at uh, the kind of uh, repression, the kind of uh, uh, injustice that uh, overall surrounds mm. not just the candidates, mm. but law-abiding taxpayers of this country mm. who are daily, you know, clobbered and treated like uh, they, 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 you know, they are totally uh, useless uh, things, not even human beings. So it's, it's very frustrating, you know, sitting here and knowing that the struggle that I have invested my life in, mm. almost my entire life, mm. even after so long, you know, uh, you know, f from 1980, it's 40 years mm. that it actually looks worse than it was 40 years ago. It's very frustrating. When you look at these entire elections, uh, the year of 2021, what is unique and what is uh, the same as per the dynamics? Well, a lot of it is frankly the same. It's, it's more of the same. Uh, this particular campaign is obviously uh, in a rather uh, different global environment of the pandemic. Uh, but, uh, you know, that in itself should have invited us to interrogate whether to have it. Mm. Uh, we didn't, or we did, and uh, we chose to, uh, mm. to take the dangerous path that we have taken. The other thing, of course, is that, um, which is not entirely new, but um, I think a little more constrictive, mm. is the period within which the campaign itself uh, has to be done. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and very strange, you know, I, I think we have had each time, each season of new electoral commission, as we, just have, we have just had worse and worse mm. electoral managers. Mm. Because in this particular electoral season, the people who have the smallest place in which to campaign have mm. the longest time. And those with the widest place to campaign have the shortest time. Mm -hmm. A councillor for a parish mm. will campaign for six months. <laughs> Before even the time comes. Before they vote. Mm. A councillor for a parish which you can walk through every day. Mm. They have six months to campaign. They are the first to be nominated, and they will be the, la the last to be elected. Oh, yeah. The person who has to campaign in 146 mm. districts, mm. 146 mm. districts, has 60 days in which to do that. Mm. Now, this is... and. You know, we are talking about 350, I think 351 mm. constituencies. Mm. Now, a decent campaign to reach, to reach people, mm. and especially in a country like ours, whose media penetration mm. is <clears throat> really insignificant, even after all the hype about the number of FM uh, Station, radio TV stations TV. and TVs mm. and so on. If you go to the villages, that's why they wanted to buy radios when it, when it, it <laughs> downed on them that uh, that uh, you know the, uh, one could have education mm. remotely. Mm. They realized there were no radios in the homes. They have been thinking about buying radios for homes, mm. and that's the truth. There are no radios in the homes. Mm. And even if you put them there, they would have no batteries to put in the radios. You know, the, the amount of poverty that we are dealing with in this country is mm. humongous. Is a humongous. And, and therefore, with that level of media penetration, mm. any decent campaign would mean that you actually have to talk to people physically. Mm. Now, if you have to talk to people physically, you at least need minimum a day 
for a constituency. Because a constituency, you'll find, has maybe five, four, mm. seven sub-counties. Mm. Now, you can imagine if you had to talk to people in a sub-county, and the sub-county is big, you know? Mm. Even if you had a day in a sub-county, that's why these uh, parish people are going to spend six months. So you have now to campaign in three districts, not in just one sub-county, not in several sub-counties in, in, in a constituency, mm -hmm. not in several constituencies in a district, but you need to have to, you know, have to campaign in three districts per day. Per day. Mm -hmm. Now, in those three districts per day, you are being met with a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. uh, as I have been seeing it, you know, every candidate will first go through these metal spikes and uh, fight with the soldiers to reach to reach uh, the venue. Uh, so d d just mm. the you know the difficulties that candidates uh, have in this same. in this election mm. is, I think, far far greater than even what we have experienced. Doctor, when, when 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 one um, comes on on that grid, someone would say the current campaign it's what they call a generational battle between the old and the young. Um, from where you look. What does Uganda become after Ms. Seven? Is that how you see it as well on your side? You know, that is a total misrepresentation of what the struggle is. And again, this is one of my very deep frustrations mm. that I have. Mm. That, frankly, we have a population which up to now, mm. there is a significant portion that doesn't get what Yes, the challenge is. of the country is. Mm. The challenge of the country and the challenge of the continent, not just Uganda, mm. is not a generational problem. The challenge of Uganda is a power problem. That the population is powerless, whether young or old. That is the problem. They don't have the power. That there is no power in the country, in the population. Where is the power, Doctor? With gunmen who even created these countries. Mm. These countries were not created by ourselves. They were created by guns from the British mm. and the Europeans. Now, you, so our countries were created by force, foreign force. Mm. They are still kept by force. Uganda has never had a leader hand over peacefully to another leader. Mm. in its entire history. Does that mean we are going to go back to war, Doctor? No, 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 no. Mm. First, let's first resolve what the problem is. Mm. Because you are, is you are introducing it as a matter of course yes. that there is a generational battle. battle. Mm. The problem is not a generational one. Mm. The problem is a power control one. Who mm. controls power? It's not generations. Power is controlled by guns, mm -hmm. by force. Not by the population. There is no popular control of power. Mm. And that is the problem. That a few people who control the means of causing pain to others mm -hmm. control all the power, mm. manage all our wealth. Mm. So the struggle at hand is not a struggle between old and young. Mm. It's a struggle between those who have power, the few that have power with force, and the whole population that has no power. Mm. It's a liberation struggle. Okay. It's so frustrating that up to now, mm. 60 years after independence, our people seem not to get it, or it's the narrative is uh, deliberately uh, wrongly projected by those who understand. Mm. Uh, so th that is the struggle. It's <clears throat> a liberation struggle. Now, a liberation struggle means the entire population is united mm -hmm. in demanding that they regain control and influence in the country.
Okay. Nobody has has power, whether young or old or whatever, women or men or nobody has has power. Doctor, that brings me to a conversation. Uh, of late, there's been such a big wave from the president. I've, I've I've really looked at what he alludes to every time he goes. Every time the president has gone into elections. He claims that the opposition is being supported by foreign countries. In most cases, he never mentions those foreign countries. But how true are these allegations? And on the flip side of it, how about his consistent allegations of the opposition's being violent, yet you as opposition have no tools of violence at hand? What do you make of the entire situation? Well, you see, Mr. Museven, as I have said, mm. controls the country by force. Okay. He came to power by force. Mm. He is maintained in office by force. I defeated him in 2016. Mm. He overthrew the people's will. Detained me, took me to Karamoja. Mm. Charged me with treason. He has never prosecuted me. Up to today. Up to today, there is another election. So clearly he abuses power mm. to remain in office. Now, part of, the reason, part of the ways he does that mm. is, one, to stop anybody contesting against him or even who, who, the population mm. from having freedom to express themselves, mm -hmm. to talk about his ears mm. and what the country needs to, to be. Mm. So freedom of expression, the freedoms mm. are grossly curtailed. Secondly, to deny them logistics, mm -hmm. money mm. that they can use to influence. Because in order to carry out any form of campaign, you need logistics. Of course. You need to move. You need airtime if you go to the radios. You need to pay. Operation you need So one needs logistics mm. in politics. Mm. Now, he, that's another place where he tightens very closely. Mm -hmm. So internally, what they call, se, you know, security operations. Mm. One, of its, one of the security operations is to hunt who has money. And if anybody has money who is not under their control, mm. that money must be removed from them. And Impoverishment. The president said that this is by Western forces, external forces that want to cause anarchy. Yes, in this, the is the, this, is the, this is where I'm that coming. Is the strategy. This is where I'm coming. Okay. So first of all, mm. it is to make sure that internally, Nobody has money that can provide that kind of logistics. Okay. Anybody who is doing business must be his son, must be his daughter, mm -hmm. must be his in-law, must be the people he controls mm -hmm. who, and who support him. Mm -hmm. If there is anybody who does not support him, he should not have money. And they will be hunted down and make sure that they are impoverished, including the, the general population. Mm -hmm. That's why the means of production for the country and 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 and, and the economic empowerment mm. has been grossly undermined that's why cooperatives were destroyed in the first place mm. because cooperatives were empowering the population mm. that's why you know you, you, you our co our uh, national assets corporations public corporations mm. were all privatized to themselves mm -hmm. you know that we had the Uganda Commercial Bank, now it is <coughs> Ambic Bank, mm. which is owned by uh, the, the, the Museven family. Mm. Uh, so they, they privatized what was national assets mm -hmm. to deny funds for people that can organize against them. Mm -hmm. So internally, they have control over anybody who has money. Mm -hmm. That leaves external sources. Mm. So then their worry is who can bring in money from from yeah. outside to help these people to organize mm. that's why he's he, he now attacks foreigners mm. he thinks if there are people organizing and he doesn't know where they are getting money from because mm. he has impoverished everybody mm. he has uh, uh, you know control he see he looks at every account mm. so who is who, how are these people moving how do they buy fuel? but doctor how true are these allegations do you as a of course it's have... nonsense but even if they were true mm. there is no reason at all, why people outside the country should not fund people in the country. Mm. First of all, we have a huge diaspora mm. population, mm. you know. Uh, the money 
which the people, Ugandans outside Uganda, bring into Uganda, mm. is much more than Uganda earns on its own from its exports. So if Ugandans outside have money, mm. because they, are not, they have not been impoverished like the ones he controls here, mm. whom he has impoverished, why, why can't Ugandans send money back to liberate their country? Mm. It's their legitimate right to then do that, so. That brings me to a question, Doctor. Museveni seemed to be a darling to the West in the recent past and years. What happened? What changed? Why is he scared about the, 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 the external funders who, to whom he was a darling? Well, I really don't know. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, first of all, understand that the foreigners mm. don't relate to Uganda because they like any of us. Okay. Why do they It's not like? that they like Museveni because Museveni is a good person, but that they like mm. this one or that one. Mm. Foreigners come here for their own interests. Mm -hmm. They have national interests they serve mm. in their capitals. Mm. Now, when their foreign interests are undermined, then they become unhappy with whoever is undermining them. Oh, okay. And uh, when their interests are being served, regardless of whether ours are being served, mm -hmm. because when they were dealing with him, he was uh, still torturing us and killing us. It's mm. not that uh, Museveni's attitude to Ugandans has changed, mm. that that is what has changed the opinion of foreigners. No. Mm. Museveni has been doing the same things that he's doing. The reason that the, I, if they are against him now, they <coughs> will be against him, mm. is that because of having done what he has been doing for a long time, he's now endangering the, the country itself, the economy. Okay. The economy has collapsed, actually. And uh, insecurity is bound to happen. Everybody can see that. Mm. that you cannot sustain this level because the more he becomes unpopular, the more he must use force. Mm -hmm. The more he uses force, the more he becomes even more unpopular. Mm -hmm. So they see that there is a big political risk ahead, ahead that Museveni <coughs> represents a mm. huge political risk, and that is a risk to their interests, oh. to their investments to their businesses. So they will change the approach. So they would want a transition to what will secure their interests. That's why I think they, would be, they cannot favor him. Mm. So happily now, it would appear, therefore, mm. that their, their, our interest for change here mm. happens to coincide with theirs. It's not, that, it's not that they are supporting our freedom. It's their foreign policy. It's, it's that the, Museven is now endangering their, their, interests. their interests. That's how I would look Doctor, at Doctor, before COVID-19 hit the country, we're in a process of having a national dialogue. But now with the death of over 54 Ugandans, this is according to the president, by the way, is it time for Ugandans from all walks of life to talk and discuss about the future of Uganda? Well, it has always been ripe for Ugandans to discuss its future. Hmm. As I have said, Uganda, Uganda has been imperiled, has been in danger all these years. It's not a new thing. It's not mm. COVID. Mm. Even before COVID, <coughs> there was a very, very deep crisis here. Mm. You know, really, and, and as I have said, it's not just Uganda. It's real Africa. We, are, we have an existential threat. This country, we can become extinct. This continent, the black people of this mm. continent can become extinct. Mm. The gap in knowledge mm. between Africa and other continents it's is enough. extremely huge. Mm. We have no knowledge on this continent. That should worry us mm. because the world eliminates the weak. And, the, and the, the biggest weakness one can have is weakness in the knowledge. Mm. Now there is a pandemic. The whole continent, we are looking at others to save us. When we talk about vaccines, we are looking at others to save us. Mm. 
I, I, I saw and published uh, and, and, and yes uh, I saw that yesterday on your uh, Facebook uh, yes mm. a, a map mm. of how people will get vaccines we are the last we shall be the last 2023 and and understandably we don't have even the money we, we must beg they must it, they have to first uh, protect their populations who pay the money that invented these things mm. then they will look at us <laughs> Who may infect them? Others. Who may infect them if we are not retreated? <laughs> that's, that's, that's how they will come to now. That's three years later. Yes, yes. Now, we cannot survive in that kind of situation. Mm. So the gap in knowledge, the gap in wealth, and wealth follows knowledge, oh, yes. is so huge that Ugandans, it's extremely urgent. It's not about COVID. It's urgent for our survival mm. that we look at how we rapidly change the situation. Mm. You know, you look at the situation of our children. Mm. Up to today, 33% of our children mm. are stunted, child stunting, mm. which is irreversible. Now, if one of every three children is stunted, mm. is operating far below capacity of a human being mm. for life. That, that is a huge, huge crisis. Mm. We are talking about having 40 million. In effect, we have uh, 10 million. Stunted. N no. Mm. Yes. Mm. We, have 10, we have 10 stunted million that we have, the others have to look after. Mm. So that, that should worry any person, any reasonable person, and that this has been going on for all these years. You know, that Museven has been in power 35 years, is talking about, you know, securing the future. Can, can, can you secure a future of stunted people? Yesterday, do <laughs> Doctor, yesterday we had our very first story on the COVID-19 cash payouts. You saw how much money went into these. What do you have to say about these stories that bring out corruption that was invaded in COVID-19 cash? You see, it's not just COVID-19. Mm. What I talked about, the liberation struggle. Mm -hmm. What is it that we are liberating? We have no control over our resources. As a nation. As a country. That's mm. what it means. Mm. I told people a long time ago, don't waste your time that you are listening to the national budget. It's mm. nonsense. We don't have a national budget. The money of this country is run according to what Museveni wants. Wow. Absolutely. The COVID money is a very glaring example. Mm. All the, first of all, when COVID came, we did not have a single shilling in our Bank of Uganda that this is the national reserve. Contagious. All the money that mm. should be our reserves had already been eaten. We are a country without a reserve. So even the first bag of food that we had to buy mm. to save our people in lockdown, or to give to Minister of Health, or to, we had to borrow. Mm. The country immediately borrowed 600 million euro in March. These are unprecedented times, Doctor. We didn't see this coming. We didn't, but mm. that's why every country must have a contingency, mm. because everybody knows that you can have things that happen without your prediction. Mm. You can have an earthquake, you can have uh, storms, you can have all kinds of things. Mm. That's why we have, must have a, 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 a reserve. We didn't have any reserve. That means we are reckless. It's like a drunkard. In a, in a home who has nothing in the bedroom, you know, mm. <laughs> you know that's how we, that's how the country is run. Uh -huh. it's, we are a country of drunk, of mm. you know, managed by drunkards. So we had no reserve. Mm. We borrowed all this money. Of the money that was borrowed, when mm. everybody is locked down, when everybody is suffering, from March up to now, mm. the money that has been taken to state house. Not the president's office, the, the home, state house. the home mm. of Mr. Museven. <coughs> Six hundred and twenty billion for secret work in his home. Six hundred and twenty billion. 
money for donations in his home, mm. state house donations, mm. 343 billion. Between March and now? Yes. So just the donations of his home and secret, whatever secret he was doing, Classified. he was doing in COVID in the home, mm. in the home, between donations and secrets in his home, <laughs> we have spent a trillion. On the home? Yes, on the home, one trillion. Yet doctors have no masks, mm. have no gloves, have nothing, you know. They, 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 the children are at home, not going, not having education for a whole year. Uh, they, uh, you know, the hospitals have nothing. You know, uh, then that you talk about that report. Mm. So, first of all, the money, even in that report, was a small part of what was borrowed. Doctor, now Rachel, the, of that, sm of what was borrowed, mm. a small part that was given to her, mm. that was given to. Uh, you know, disaster prepared disaster people. Mm. That that is what is in that report. That was a small part. Mm. The big it, part. It, it, the big part is what was siphoned away as classified. Wow. Now this small part that was given to government functions, mm. as you have seen, was also stolen, largely, by the same people. Mm. You know that's why you see that. Uh, uh, these daughters of Kutesa, uh, one married to General Muhozi, mm. the other one uh, uh, to, to, to another f friend of theirs, mm. uh, uh, that they are the ones who supply oxygen, that they were the ones who were hired. <laughs> you can that imagine. Is an you can scale. imagine. Mm. By, by the Minister of Health. Mm. No tendering, no. What? What? How do Ugandans, how do we share into our opportunities? Because this is our money. Mm. How do other people share into these opportunities? How is a tender like that one? Mm. You know? When, when I complained about it, people were saying, but these are also Ugandans. I'm not against any Ugandan doing, any business. Ugandan doing business, including mm. those in the state house. Mm. But it must be transparent. Level grounds. It must be, we must have equal. Mm. Opportunity. I would have put in a tender mm. and realized that their tender is better than mine. Mm. I would never complain if, if the opportunity was open to us. So even the little money that went to all these places, you see that, you know, the, somewhere to buy uh, loudspeaker, mm. these mukarakasa, yes. the, the, the loudspeakers. Mm. Megaphones. To, ma megaphones <coughs> to talk about COVID in the villages. <laughs> you know? The regulars never came through. <laughs> They equally never can so <laughs> I don't know which where there is a village where there are <laughs> megaphones. I've people, only seen Katumba. People, people to, they do Katumba manage to <laughs> Katumba <laughs> 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 But I've not seen it anyway. So, Doctor, with all these, um, we have seen opposition, even government, um, even the NRM candidate, uh, talking to crowds. From where you stand, your FDC as well and other opposition presidential candidates have been seen campaigning, drawing big crowds without masks. Does this concern you as a doctor and a politician in these times where we Intensely, are intensely, very intensely. You know, I, I have, right from the onset of the pandemic, mm. <clears throat> I took very, very keen interest. I published weekly uh, you know, briefings about COVID. You actually gave me a concoction. I'm, I'm still running by. Yes, I, 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 I have been deeply involved mm. in the whole pandemic. Mm. We tried to save Ugandans mm. uh, because we knew that there, there is really no government, mm. that they are locking down <coughs> people, that there is no ambulance system in the country to take people to hospitals. Mm. We mobilized the Ugandans. To, to volunteer and give vehicles to a pool that we could use to, to, to create emergency services in lockdown. Mm. The regime arrested and uh, terrorized everybody to stop that, uh, you know, nobody apart from government is Damages. allowed to move. Mm. We try to say those were standards, quality control measures. Nonsense, mm. absolute nonsense. Because, so where have those quality measures gone? Because the pandemic is still there, mm. you know? So that, that was absolute trash. 
we trained our drivers mm. because again this we are not doing it as a reckless people mm. we are we are people who know what we are doing mm. we trained drivers on managing uh the movement of patients during such a crisis mm -hmm. because again whether it's a woman going to deliver mm -hmm. whether it's uh, somebody having uh, an epileptic fit or whatever mm -hmm. you know whatever emergency it is you don't know who has covid and who doesn't True. so in order to provide any service of any kind including you know people in the village you know the the people who deli you know the traditional birth attendants mm. the anybody who does her father in health relations mm. should have been immediately sensitized mm. and protected mm -hmm. so that any any time you are dealing with a, a, a sick person or a, a, a supposedly unwell person for any reason you are protected that never happened this should have been the first response of, of government mm -hmm. but we did when we mobilized the drivers we had the training we had a day's training mm -hmm. of the drivers on how to take pe people safely to to health facilities mm -hmm. we provided them with the sanitizers with the masks and with the prote uh, personal protection uh, for the drivers mm -hmm. but the, the government blocked it we we tried to mobilize we, we, we were trying to mobilize you know food uh, to, to give to people, government blocked it, yet not providing mm. anything in the alternative. Uh, the only thing that remained working and which uh, is still open was counseling. We also provided counseling services. Mm. So now, in, and I then provided the um, weekly briefs mm. on the pandemic, the pandemic case. to say how it is. So. Mm. I, I cannot fail to be very concerned mm. about what is going on in the campaigns mm. relating to the spread of the of How the, of the COVID. should these campaigns have been handled? What could be the best way? Here? The best way was simply not to have campaigns at this time. Why? Because, as I have told you, mm. it is absolutely ridiculous in a country whose media penetration I have already talked about mm. to imagine that you can have what they call scientific or digital campaigns. Mm. It's ridiculous. Uh, the FM stations that they are talking about, even now... 255. Yeah, mm. and, and you can mm. see, even now, they are, because they are, they are owned by uh, NRM functionaries, I told you they, they, that, that has been the the policy to to crush everybody else, mm -hmm. make sure everybody else is poor. So whoever owns the radio is uh, is theirs. Mm -hmm. the, the radios are either theirs directly or their agents. Mm. So others who are challenging them have no access to these radios. But even when we pay exorbitantly mm. for airtime on those radios, mm. you are stopped. You have seen, you know, candidates stopped from accessing these... Uh, media houses mm. so in that kind of a situation where the media penetration is very low mm -hmm. uh, where uh, you know even uh, the f finances for for campaigns mm -hmm. is very low and so it, it was and and uh, you know you have uh, a still a highly illiterate population we should never have had these campaigns. Mm -hmm. The law provides a path mm -hmm. that could avoid them until we are safe. The president chose to take the Health Act. The reason the mm -hmm. Mr. Museveni chose to endanger the country, and by the way, you remember, he himself had said that it would be madness for anyone to organize for to elections. organize the election that was the second address hmm? people had already suspected that they are mad people in this <laughs> government you know <laughs> now they have confirmed that, that we are actually managed by mad people <laughs> <You know? laughs> this was his road pronouncement uh -huh. so that should have been the only reason he chose to take the dangerous path mm. was because it downed on him that if elections were postponed mm. There is no path in the law that could allow him to come. That could allow him to continue in office uh, after May. 
Yes. Then the Speaker of Parliament would to have had over. to take over. With such a hostile parliament at that time. <laughs> so he could not <clears throat> contemplate. Mm. He, Museveni can never, will never contemplate not exercising power. Mm. Never. He will never contemplate. That's why for me, I even, uh, there are those who are talking Muhozi project, I don't know which project. There is only Museveni project until he dies. That's the, he can't contemplate. So he doesn't have a succession plan whatsoever, the case it is? He has a succession plan like you have, that like when you die, my son will your son. Son. <laughs> Oh my other... Yes, that, that's, that, that's maybe he has even put it in his will or something. Yeah. That's his succession plan, but not in terms of transition plan. Of power to power. That, uh, you know, you hand over power. He does not consider a moment when he will hand over mm. power, no. That's why he's always talking about, you know, he wants to liberate Africa, he wants, I don't know. Mm, East Africa. Not just East Africa, Africa. Mm. He, yes. he, his mission is for Africa. He's a Pan-African. Uh, yeah, but who, who, being a Pan-African doesn't mean that you have to lead Africa. You know, you can be, we are all Pan-Africans. Mm. We, 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 we provide information, we work for uh, Pan-African ideas. Mm. You don't have to be... Uh, the manager, mm. a manager, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, this is just, you know, it's, it's a form of uh, sickness indeed. Mm. So, uh, you know, that uh, is the problem of the pandemic, that we had a Mr. Museveni mm. who felt personally, uh, you know, worried mm. that the pandemic could go beyond his term mm. and he has to leave office. When it comes to that, he doesn't care how many people die. He doesn't. And this is why, you know, I, 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 really, I really feel so uh, disturbed mm. about people now you see claiming that they are NRM. Mm -hmm. and saying the opposition wants to disturb peace, mm. you know, the opposition wants to With uh, this, uh, this defiance. Mm. They forget that Mr. Museveni came to power on top of half a million scars mm. that had died in a war he started. With your help, you're in the center. Yes, mm. absolutely. Mm. So, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying disturbs me is that now they forget. So they say, you know, Museveni is the embodiment of peace. Mm. You others want to disturb the peace. You know? yes. <laughs> we are the ones who want to disturb the peace. Mm. And uh, he can kill people who want to disturb peace. Mm. So he will go if you protest his injustice. He can come and shoot as many people as he wants. Mm. So what I'm saying is, Museveni has no regard whatsoever to people's lives. Absolutely none. But he has led us through the pandemic. He said he gave the best leadership. Uganda was accredited as one of those countries. Accredited by fools. You know, again, really by fools. Because if anybody, be if any, absolutely. <laughs> you know, if anybody is living here, mm. uh, how would you accredit this uh, uh, fake thing that it is doing the best? Mm. You know, I told you where we started, that you have a country without any reserve of any kind. So you accredit that, that this is a country prepared for a pandemic without any reserve of anything. Mm. No food reserve, no fuel reserve, no medicine reserve, nothing. That is the, you know, a country that has been spending mm. for the most of these 35 years, less than five percent of the budget on health i think it's only on two years when the budget went to seven percent but again it came back down yes mm. that is a country that you you you, you credit you cre because how does a, a pandemic how is a pandemic managed if there is no health system to run it if you have been spending less than five percent of a budget mm. you are spending money buying weapons can weapons fight a pandemic. Even during the pandemic, mm. you, you, you have seen what I have told you, that you took, during this pandemic, mm. the three trillion was taken to defense. Mm. 
mm. for classified from from borrowed money mm. three trillion we are dealing with unseen war that's what the president said so if you are taking three trillion to defense mm. not to health but people are, are drumming, you are managing a pandemic where they are just fools, absolute nickel pumps. Let's take a break for now. This is Till Morning at NTV. We are live from Kasangati, Dr. Warren Kizavesage's residence. It's a beautiful morning. We are looking at the elections and the campaigns, uh, the previous 20 years when he was right at the core of the struggle. And right now when he's on the sidelines watching what is happening and how it's happening vis-a-vis -vis the corruption going underway in the wake of the pandemic. We'll take a break will be back shortly. You're watching Morning at NTV. Kapo. Hey Kapo, I see you've really worked hard to get your business to this level. Who are you voting as a president in 2021? You're not supposed to ask me such a question. It is my secret. I cannot even tell my wife, not even my children. But anyway, I'll vote for my business. Shia, how do you vote for your business? Will it even be on the ballot paper? It may not, but I'll tell you this. I'll vote for that one person who will guarantee the prosperity of my business, who will make my business not to be disrupted at all, who will ease my transportation and my clearance of goods from border to Kampala, and I'll vote to secure my business's future. Don't gamble with your future and that of your beautiful country. Vote Yuri Kagutum Seveni on 14th January 2021 to secure your future. Nation Media Group Uganda, in partnership with Ministry of Water and Environment, Agriculture Business Initiative and Global Green Growth Institute, presents the first virtual climate change symposium with experts Bob Natifu, Commissioner Climate Change Department, Ministry of Water and Environment, Josephine Mokombia, Chief Executive Officer, Agricultural Business Initiative, Kagwa Ronald, Manager Production, Trade and Tourism Planning, National Planning Authority, and Dagmar Zwebe, Country Representative, Global Green Growth Institute, calling in live from Netherlands. Netherlands. Tune in live on NTV on Thursday, 17th December 2020 at 3 p.m. and follow the discussion on the role of government, civil society and the private sector in the climate change response in Uganda. Together, let us build a climate-friendly society and environment. Enko kembere beri eba tena koko kolima. Ngo buvuna ni zibu. Bwaba zukusi zada. Oktake la take la ba. Agendo kukole chenchia. Nga kuota dena abasomi. Wakati mchiyungwe chikute chizikiza. Chenchia. Abachala bana abasinga. Beya ambisa nko la zinu. Zinansa nguwa u. Enko la zinezo mle mbe nga gas. Tezi soboka. Oromu wendo mneni. Nazi kuno. Nga uvuna njizibuwa wa kufumba mawanga gaba filika aga singo uunji. Buliku bachala, oba mama. China bachala aba singa bache nyumirizamu, era bachikola no kwa agala. Nga zili sigiri zinta mezine izabu li jom na mpuli la zinkesi. Zinyo elamanda, muka gunyoka, mwemanzi kumye. Nga naba zinza no funa mwobu radi. Alive this Christmas season with Dance with Valentino, an exciting reality TV show where real life stories are transformed into dance and performed by the celebrity guests. It's entertaining, dramatic with the salsa, the cha cha cha, the tango, etc. Join us on NTV Sundays at 6 30 pm with repeats on Fridays 2 30 pm. And don't forget, NTV Uganda streams live on YouTube. Is brought to you by ITEL Mobile. Enjoy better life.
It's Till Morning at NTV, and we are live from Kasangati at uh, Dr. Kiza Vesige's residence. I understand my colleague Habit Zewa is in Rukunjil, where you happen to come from, Dr. Kiza Vesige. Uh, Habit Zewa, if you could paint for us a picture, what's the situation like in uh, Rukunjiri, and especially when it goes to COVID-19 guidelines? Is the NRM following all these guidelines as they were given? Thank you very much, Andrew Chamagero and the viewers, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kiza Besije, for appearing on our morning show. We are here in Rukunjiri, uh, to be specific on Nuvavo Road, and this is uh, the home district of Dr. Kiza Besije. It is also the home district of uh, Lieutenant General Henry Tomukunde, who is contesting against President Yoweri Museveni. Aside from Ruvabo constituency, the rest of the constituencies here in Rukunjiri are in the hands of the FDC. That is uh, Rujumbura uh, County, uh, Rukunjiri Municipality, and the district woman MP is also from FDC. Aside from the district chairperson who is NRM, most of the positions, even in, at the lower level, are in the hands of uh, the FDC. That means the NRM has to work extremely hard if it's uh, to take Rukunjiri district away uh, from the FDC. Uh, to tell you that uh, uh, Dr. Kiza Besije, much as is not in this race, is still strong here in Rukunjiri municipality. Where I'm standing by, I, I, I was talking to a colleague of mine, the cameraman, and I was telling him we're in the district of uh, Kiza Besije, and uh, the person who was passing by told me not to call him Kiza Besije. I should call him the only uh, doctor and the only colonel they have in this district. That shows you how passionate and how uh, the people of Rukunjiri district still have um, a trust in uh, Kiza Besije and maybe the FDC. But aside from that, here in the municipality, the FDC is still having its internal issues rising out of, the NRM, uh, right, rising out of uh, their primaries that were held in August. Uh, we have uh, the Secretary for Mobilization, Ingrid Turinawe, coming against Dr. Warren, who, is, uh, who won the, the, part, the party ticket. She chose to come back as an independent, and uh, there's fear that the votes of FTC in the municipality are likely to be uh, divided among the two, which is likely to give NRM an opportunity to come and uh, take over. But aside from that, early morning by about six, uh, the uh, uh, soundtracks of um, uh, playing music of uh, NRM, uh, people are clad in the NRM uh, yellow t-shirt colors, the posters of Yoweri Kakutam Seveni have already pinned up around this municipality of uh, Rukunjiri in anticipation of uh, uh, Yoweri Museveni's coming to campaign here. In the district that he failed to win in the 2016 general elections, he won all the districts in Chigezi sub-region apart from Rukunjiri district that was won by uh, Dr. Kiza Besije. So, Chamagero, that is uh, the situation here in Rukunjiri district. Thank you so much, Habat Zewa in Rukunjiri, and we hope that uh, this comes to light at the end of the day. Uh, the FDC squabbles that is um, currently underway, that they will come to lasting solutions as a party. Uh, coming back to you, Dr. Warren, um, CSOs, civil society organizations, and NGOs, their accounts were frozen over the weekend. And they have come out and they have challenged the government if it can name one particular country because these are elements the president is saying that they are being used by external forces. And I've, um, I've seen them alluding to the fact that this seems to be a targeted move. What's your take on this? Yeah, well, <clears throat> thank you. And um, if Habat Ziwa uh, is still monitoring in Nigeria, you're trying to. You Mm. extend my warm greetings to all my people there. The, fortunately, the people of Rukunjiri... And they say that you're the only doctor and the only colonel they have. Well, fortunately for the people of Rukunjiri, they woke up. Oh, yes. Part of the problems we still have in this country is that people, some, some people have not woken up to the reality mm -hmm. that I have been describing. The people of Rukunjiri woke up and mm. they know what to do. So even if he seven goes, even if he takes his billions to buy support, he won't. Mm. Now, I told you earlier on in the program <clears throat> that as part of Museven's approach to controlling the country, mm. continuing to keep a strong hold mm. on the country, is to control means of doing anything. Okay. Funds. Logistics. Logistics. Mm -hmm. First,
that nobody from outside brings, because he has no control over the people outside, that nobody from outside brings in money that can be used mm. in a manner he doesn't like. Mm. So the attack on foreign, on, on NGOs is because our NGOs mm. are largely foreign funded. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, a, a challenge, part of the challenge of li the liberation struggle. Mm. Because NGOs should be organizations of people, of the people themselves, mm -hmm. to champion their interests. Now, when you have NGOs that are there for largely, if not entirely, foreign funded, mm. it puts into question whose interests they champion. Mm -hmm. Because whoever pays the piper like frankly so. calls the tune. Mm. So part of the weakness of our what they call non-government organization or civil society organizations mm. is that really they are not civil society. Okay. Is that really they are uh, they are some kind of uh, a, a, an international public service? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they, 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 they. Now that 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 is problematic to start with. Mm. That is problematic. So if these organizations were domestic were largely domestically funded mm. and their finances the finances of people to champion their interests mm. are interfered with the way they are interfering with them the people whose money they are interfering with would be coming blazing to fight mm. which regrettably is not the it's case not the structure, yes. because that's not the structure of this mm. but you are you are interested to find out what advises yes. what is being done. Mm. It is for just that reason. These, you see the targeted organizations, mm. civil society organizations, are the ones whose functions, mm -hmm. whose purpose is to deal with human rights, mm -hmm. to deal with uh, uh, you know, the uh, public conscience, mm. awakening people, education, uh, civic education, mm. women empowerment, you know, mm. empowering, you know, those that politically empower mm. the population act against Muslim Seven's interest directly. They are, so, in other words, the harassment, the attack on them mm. is not different from the attack on political organizations. Mm. Because even political organizations, that is the role mm. of parties, you know, to conscientize the, po yes, the population, mm. to, 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 to aggregate their interests and champion them. That, so, brings, that, that, that so, brings me to a conversation. I understand we have uh, Patrick Onyango with uh, Honorable Patrick Oboy Amoriat, who happens to be in the Karamoja sub-region. Yesterday, he was not allowed to address over 200 people the picture was very glaring. On the other side, we had over two, uh, 2,000 people waiting to listen to him, but he was only allowed to speak to a handful of them. My colleague pa Onyango Jackson is on standby. Onyango, can you paint for us a picture? How is this early morning the FDC candidate doing on the ground? Good morning. We are coming to you from Kotido Municipal where the Forum for Democratic Change presidential candidate Patrick Oboy Amriat spent the evening here. He will be campaigning today in Abim, Karenga and Kabong districts. Of course, the program, there was a change to the program, whereby yesterday he was meant, according to the initial program, he was, to, he was supposed to have campaigned in Abim district. However, the National Unity Platform presidential candidate, Robert Chagulanyi, was also campaigning in that area, and that's how the program was changed later on, and he had his campaigns here in Kotido. Uh, here he's speaking about establishing industries, that is to say, marble, 
uh, limestone, that is for the manufacture of cement, and even gold processing industries. Also, on the other issue that the candidate has been talking about is about ending cattle rustling, whereby uh, Turkana from the Kenyan side crossed the border into the Ugandan side, which causes some insecurity. So he said, he says that he will use the bloodline relation that he has with the Turkana to ensure that this is stopped forever. Uh, so that's what is happening here today. Back to you in studio. What are the security blankets like and uh, what have they emphasized from last night to today? See, the schedules were not harmonized between the uh, NUP candidate and the FDC candidate on this side. But on the same thing again, the security seems to be having glitches here and there. What do you make of that? No, the security is not uh, doing anything different mm. now from what they have done always, which is to carry out the orders of their commander, Mr. Museveni. Mm. And Mr. Museveni, uh, as I have already said, is the person. You know, I have really never seen anybody as terrified of an election. As Mr. Museveni, I, I don't know whether any person. <laughs> what do you mean by terrified? Don't you know, he, because I mean one can pretend and allow something. You know, he's so he has morbid fear mm. of losing power mm. that you know he's not willing to allow even the slightest pretense of uh, you know having a, a, a reasonable fear competition mm. you know because so he actually you know the electoral commission is totally has nothing to do with the running of this. That's why he was coming. It has the electoral commission is in it charge has nothing. It, is, it, it, it cannot even start pretending that it has anything to do and it's not the first time mm. in 201 that time the chairman of the electoral commission was uh, the late Aziz Kasuja. Mm. Kasuja wrote to Mr. Museveni mm. a letter that is part of the evidence that we presented in court mm. in challenging the outcome of that election. Mm. Kasuja said, Mr. President, the military has disintegrated this election. Mm -hmm. Please do something to stop any further disintegration of this election. As he an EC chairperson? Pardon? As an, a chairman of the EC? Yes, Kasuja as chairman mm. of EC. Mm. Now, according to the law, security of the election is the responsibility of the electoral commission. Indeed. L like everything else mm. that uh, r relates to the election. Mm. You ask, you should go and inter, 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 interview Mr. Biavakam. Biavakam, whether he has anything to do with the security of the election. He has absolutely nothing, you know. Mm. He even doesn't have anything to do with his own security. He has, <laughs> you know, he's, so that is, the, that is the problem, that mm. the security mm. is under the command, continuing command of a candidate mm -hmm. who is mm. very terrified of loss. But police and the army will say they are actually following up all the other candidates on the ground to make sure that the observance of the SOPs are being up there to unfold. Yeah, but I mean, you live here, you know that that's absolute garbage. You know, we saw what happened in the NRM primaries. Mm -hmm. Where was the police? Wasn't it here? Mm -hmm. It's the same police was here. Mm -hmm. The NRM primaries, including the minister of health, who's who put a signature on those regulations. Yes, yes. She was the, dancing with the procession, you know, in Rira and so on and so forth. Mm. You know, where was the police? Even now, 
where is the police? You've been seeing the processions, not just of the NRM people, but mm. of Museveni. Mm. Because Mr. Museveni, you know, I don't know whether he takes Ugandans for what. You know, he should have some re slight respect that Ugandans have something in their heads. Mm. Because that, that he sits with the people a hundred meters away from him in a tent. Social distancing. In a tent. Mm. That therefore he is respecting these things. Mm. When he's seated there, he has funded Bebekur, uh, who comes, you know, mobilizing throngs of people to, uh, to his music and to what, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and he pretends he doesn't know about that. Mm. He, 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 he doesn't. The secretariat uh, came out and he said, doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't support it. And he condemned it in the highest. He doesn't possible. support it, and the police doesn't see it. You know, <laughs> for those people, this is absolute. You know, mm. it's so sad. You know, sometimes I feel like migrating because I didn't. You should not migrate, though. Because I need to live in a country where you are so uh, disrespected. Mm. You know, so, so abused that somebody thinks you must be just. You know, so foolish that mm. you, you know, you, they can tell you any nonsense. They can, you can, you can live with anything. You know, mm. it's so, so, so disturbing. Disturbing. In that way, just last week, uh, the foreign secretary, rather the foreign committee, the chairperson of the foreign committee in the U.S., um, with his party coming into power very soon, he wrote to the Congress and told them that. Uh, Uganda and, and they, they pulled out some names from the Kavale incident, the, rather the Kasese incidents, to the incidents about uh, the abuse of human rights. What does this mean when such a superpower starts to get interested in our, um, in our issues back here and someone of that kind of hierarchy coming up and say human rights are being abused in, in a country like Uganda? Well, first of all, Andrew, you, mm -hmm. you should understand and, and all our viewers viewers out there mm. the struggle i was talking about mm. of regaining power and influence in mm. our country mm. is our struggle mm -hmm. it's the struggle of ugandans nobody will do it for us mm. we must struggle until we achieve the objective of change mm. And that change, not just change of a leader, mm. but a change of the power structure mm -hmm. from gunmen to the population. Mm -hmm. That struggle is for the people of Uganda and the people of Uganda alone. No one else. We are the ones to fight it and to win it. Mm. Now, however, having said that, you understand that human rights, first mm. of all, are universal. That's why Uganda is a signatory to the Rome Statute, to the conventions, all the conventions, the African con uh, stat Convention of P Human and People's Rights, mm. the, the International Conventions, mm. the UN, the, uh, even the East African, uh, the, 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 the Constitutive Act mm. of the East African Cooperation yeah. has uh, commitment mm. to human rights. So all our international engagements commit us mm. to standards of human rights. Mm -hmm. And as I have said, if you violate rights of anybody anywhere, you have violated the rights of people everywhere. Mm. So the international community has a legitimate interest mm in ensuring that the covenants we have put, we have committed ourselves to mm. are respected mm. you know here sometimes again very annoyingly you hear some uh, people who also draw salaries from my taxes and that's really what m makes me mad you know you find people all kinds of people that should never have anything to do with my money you know <laughs> You know, pondos, I don't know what. You know, mm. find people draw money mm. to talk things that are, are, are most ridiculous. So you find people ridiculing mm. the international community for having interest in what is going on in Uganda. They must have interest. Mm. 
Mm. Because what happens here affects them also. Mm. When you terrorize Ugandans, we we'll go and seek refuge there. Africa has uh, ridiculed itself mm. with all these Africans dying in the Mediterranean Sea, trying to cross to go and look for safer places to live, mm. as if Africa is a terrible continent to that we should not be happy with. Then that brings me to a question, Doctor. If we allow the West or whichever to intervene in our sovereignty and our patent issues as a nation, what no, should no, be the No, limit? no, 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 no. Having an interest in the human rights of people in the world That's does not mean that you have taken over sovereignty. Mm. I told you the first thing is that our sovereignty, because we are now not sovereign anyway, you are not sovereign. Because they don't have the power. Because you don't have power. Mm. So our sovereignty, the acquisition of our sovereignty, the acquiring of our sovereignty is our thing to achieve. Mm. We are the people who must get it. But that doesn't mean that people even who dominate us by whatever means, mm. You know, South Africa, when it was apartheid South Africa, mm. why did the whole, why did even we Ugandans call for changes in South Africa? Mm. Why did we give a base of South Africans in Uganda to train fighters, South African fighters, to go back, to and, go back and liberate South Africa? Because the rights of Africans in South Africa mm. are intertwined with the rights of, 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 of Ugandans here. So if we can give a base to South Africa to liberate South Africans mm. from apartheid. Why can't any other country, including African countries, they should give us bases to liberate Uganda mm. from the apartheid of, 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 of the NRM junta? Because what is happening here is not different from apartheid. Mm. The, the only difference is that the other ones were white and the others black. But even here, we live in apartheid. There are two Ugandas. Mm -hmm. A Uganda where people will go to different schools. Mm. The schools where they go is not where the schools where we go. Where they get medical treatment is not where you get medical treatment. Mm. There is apartheid here. So, international people mm. are totally justified, mm. all of them, in having concern about the rights, the violation, mm. the gross violation of rights here in Uganda. And so the, uh, I, I, I applauded mm. the action of the Foreign Relations Committee mm. in expressing that concern mm. and wanting an investigation. Mm. Because all they were saying is that mm. an investigation should be uh, carried out mm. or they should insist through whatever diplomatic channels mm. that there is an independent investigation. Mm. I've been seeing here, you know, the uh, uh, the junta here <laughs> claiming that uh, they are also investigating their yeah, crimes. Yeah. Mm. You don't investigate yourself because who is who, who is who, who committed the crime in the first place if it is the police? Mm. So who is investigating? <laughs> you cannot invest. You know the, the crimes of Kasese. Mm. What investigation has gone on there? The crimes of work to work, when mm. many people are killed here, who is investigating those? Mm. The crimes of the uh, 209, the Kayunga mm. uh, riots, who has investigated those? All the atrocities that have taken place. So, the thing is that the level of atrocities that have taken place here, the type of atrocities call for an independent inquiry. And that is why, by the way, mm -hmm. some of us mobilized the Ugandans to sign a petition to the International Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. Now, some people say, why are you running to the court? But Uganda is a member of that court. Mm -hmm. I did not, it is Mr. Museven who signed mm -hmm. to become a member of the International Criminal Court. Mm -hmm. Now, if we choose you there, how do you say we are, we are wrong when especially our courts, mm. our judicial system, the police cannot investigate? Even if we investigate privately mm. and go to court, the DPP immediately comes and take over 
our, our cases. We have taken Kaihura to, to court. We have taken uh, a number of police officers who violate rights to court. Mm. Immediately, the DPP takes, takes, over the case. takes over the case and kills it. So if, and even recently, you remember, in the case, a pe constitutional petition, mm. one of the constitutional judges said I should go to my own court. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't believe in these courts anyway. <laughs> he mm. said, yes, whether I believe in them or not, I pay them. Mm. You know, you cannot sit there eating my money, you judge. Mm. <laughs> And you say I have no right to bring a case to Dr. you. Dr. Obesige, you know? <laughs> because of time, I have two, two last questions. So there's been an instance of um, international observers of elections, and this is a question that is very pertinent because they said, the observers said, the letter that was written to them, it was to whom it may concern. It was not highlighted that to these particular ones. So with or without the observers, what value do these observers add to our elections on a, on a, on a broader scale? Well, I think the observers add value mm. to the extent that, um, first of all, if they are many, mm. if they spend a longer time, the problem is that most observers are tourists. Oh. They, they come on the eve of the election, uh -huh. check in in the five stars the big hotels mm. and uh, you know go out to, on voting day mm. and after voting day they are on their planes going now that's not election observation mm. election observation must observe the whole process mm -hmm. which begins way before the election begins mm. you know uh, which talks about the freedom because if you are talking about fairness of the election you must have observed it at least maybe more than a year before the election mm. to know registration of voters, you know, uh, the compilation of the register, mm. the freedom of expression, mm. the openness of the media. Mm. The, you know, you, you must observe all the various things uh, up to the nomination of candidates. Mm. You saw, for example, here, uh, candidates who were saying, and rightly, that the law provided for freedom to consult mm. on their candidature one year to the election. Mm. That is within the Presidential Elections Act. True. Was anybody allowed to, to go out? Now, that greatly impacts on the election itself. Because if you just surface on nomination day that you are a candidate, Nobody has ever heard of you. Nobody knows what you represent. Nobody, you know, how do you, uh, and, the, and the, you have only two months to, 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 go, to go around the, the election. Mm. How, how does anybody know what you stand for? Mm. So, you know, if observers are there to observe this, mm. and I was especially myself very happy with the European observer mission, mm. because the European observer mission stayed longest, and left light. and and uh, yes, they stayed the longest, and they they were the widest. They had more I more guess. observers. Mm. They had the greatest outreach. Mm. Regrettably, again, you know, this is where you know one gets frustrated with Africa, mm. because you know, like the Baganda say, the person who has lost a person mm. must be the one to deal with the. Uh, the more difficult things of how that person is, is buried, and is buried. You know, mm. you, uh, you cannot cry more than the bereaved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people come to help you, but the bereaved must take the. Nice. You know, look, the smallest observer mission mm. is the one of East Africa. Yet we are the people who should benefit from free elections more than anybody else. We don't, as East Africa, the regional block. invest, yes, mm. invest. That's why I, I applaud West Africa. Mm. ECOWAS. It's, it's strong, yes. ECOWAS has been very e effective and mm. helpful in helping West African states and, and transition mm. to more democratic 
dispensation. Mm. East Africa, nothing. The African mm. Union mm. is even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a conversation of another day, Doctor, because of time. Allow me just to ask you one thing. This is about COVID-19. Should we change the COVID-19 messages? You have gone wrong as a nation. The numbers are spiking. The numbers are surging. Well, but uh, who is even listening to these messages? I told you even the megaphones they wanted to buy, they, they, they are not there. Well said. There, there, is, there has been no investment in really getting people to understand what to do. Hmm. I, I, I told them about the boosting their immunity because hmm. I knew the response of Uganda had failed to hmm. contain the spread. We have now level four, hmm. the last level hmm. of spread, widespread community uh, infection. infection. Hmm. What you need to do mm. is now improve your immunity more than anything else. Yes, you must keep on putting on the mask. Mm. The mask, incidentally, is not so that you are not infected, actually. Mm. It is so that you don't you infect don't others. Infect, absolutely. And, and this is why even those who are putting them on mm. should realize that the surface of the mask mm. is the most dangerous. Mm. So when we are adjusting the mask, Mm. Please try to use the sides. Oh, yeah. Because here, which we normally tend to touch and mm. uh, lift it, is where whatever is, in, on the is supposed to infect you mm. uh, will be caught in. And, and therefore, but use masks. Mm. Continue to sanitize. Mm. These, are, you know, these are the most uh, effective things. Mm. Avoid distance mm. as much as you uh, can. Uh, you know, getting mm. close as much mm. as you can. Mm. But life must go on. Mm. Therefore, boost your immunity. Take those vitamins, mm. those that concoction mm. which I advised you. Mm. For some people, it is... It is uh, doing wonders. The test is uh, awful. Mm. If the test is very awful, by the way, maintain the same. Mm. Add some pineapple. Mm. Okay. Add pineapple so that you make it a little more, more lighter. Yeah. Thank you so much. That has been the conversation with Dr. Warren Kizave CJ, an elder and a stronghold of what they call the struggle and the change we need as Ugandans. Well, that brings us to the end of our conversation. But just to let you know that today we're expecting Honorable Patrick Amoriot on boy and uh, Honorable Chagulani Sintamo at the Electoral Commission. These two were summoned on grounds of violating the SOPs as by the Minister of health as early stipulated and in the early engagements they had with uh, the EC. So this is happening today at 10 a.m. at the Electoral Commission. NTV will bring you these updates as and when they happen. I'm Andrew Chamagero. Good morning. Buy the ITL P36 series, A35, A56, A56 Pro and P15 at any ITL mobile branded outlet this festive season.